Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless revelation 13 16 through 18 he causes all both small and great rich and poor free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. The technology is here for the Antichrist to be able to track your every move. Albeit right now, it is in our smartphones. But the technology is also here for the tracking to go from your phone to your right hand or forehead. Imagine what the Apostle John must have thought when in about 90 AD, he saw a vision of this taking place in a futuristic world. People ever since have been baffled as to how any such universal totalitarian economic system could be established or policed. But now the age of technology has arrived. With electronic commerce rapidly replacing cash and virtually everything that is bought and sold being identified and tracked by RFID chipping, it is no longer inconceivable that the financial transactions of everyone in the world could one day be monitored by a centralized agency. From all indications, the Antichrist's satanic technology-based system is already being set in place, and he will use technology to achieve and enforce his near total control of the world and its people. And we are seeing an unsaved world rushing headlong into accepting the mark of the beast, and they don't even know it. When asked whether a Federal Reserve or Central Bank digital currency might be on the horizon, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said no. People don't need to worry about a central bank digital currency. Nothing like that is, is remotely close to happening anytime soon. While Powell admits the central bank continues to work toward this currency, he realizes the obstacles to success are insurmountable. For starters, the Fed knows a central bank digital currency, or CBDC, could wreck the nation's banking industry, threaten the dollar's status as the world's reserve currency, and even threaten the Fed itself. Financial expert Nick Anthony of the Cato Institute and author of the new book, Digital Currency or Digital Control, says CBDCs don't do much of anything well except spy on you and control your money. The government shouldn't be trusted with a CBDC because they're so ripe for abuse. The government would have Americans' data by default. It would be on their servers a click away. Digital money could be programmed solely for use towards certain purchases at certain times or with an expiration date. It could also be turned off, like how the Canadian government froze hundreds of bank accounts to stop the Canadian truckers blockade over COVID restrictions. Programmability has been something that many central banks and many governments have been looking into, where payments could be programmed or the money itself could be programmed. However, Americans already have digital money from credit and debit cards to apps like PayPal and other cryptocurrency. In addition to competing directly with those financial tools, a central bank digital currency would be able to divert funds that private banks need to survive. If we think about the current banking system where deposits come in and then banks use those deposits to fund loans, a CBDC poses a fundamental threat to that, where every dollar that's held as a CBDC instead of in a savings account, for example, would mean that that's a dollar less that the banking system can use. While there is talk of a privacy-enhanced CBDC, Anthony points out this is the same federal government that's already looking through your bank account. The government has almost unfettered access into who you are and what you're doing because it requires banks and other financial institutions to routinely report your financial activity. Some argue the government will be forced to issue a CBDC to ensure the dollar remains the world's leading reserve currency. 
Technology, however, has nothing to do with the dollar's dominance. It's based on our rule of law, financial transparency, and capital markets. A badly managed CBDC, though, could cause other nations to ditch the dollar. This doesn't mean a digital dollar won't happen one day. Controlling people's money is, after all, the ultimate instrument of government control. God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. God is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. Satan, in sharp contrast, does not reflect these divine attributes. Satan is very powerful, more than any man, and more powerful than most angels. Satan wants to be like God, and even exalts himself above God, as we read in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Satan is not anywhere near to being equal with God. The only way Satan can be all-powerful, all-knowing, and present everywhere at once is through technology. When the Antichrist comes on the scene, he will undoubtedly use this type of technology as part of the beast system. Make no mistake about it. Central bank digital currency is not a monetary system. It is a social credit system in which the governments of the world will tell you how you can spend your money. We can see that Christians will be persecuted using this system as they will try and force believers in Jesus Christ to adhere to their evil ways. When Christians say no, they will turn off your CBDC account. I hope you see how the mark of the beast comes into play as Christians who get saved after the rapture and have to endure the seven-year tribulation will not be able to buy or sell. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Israel is coming under attack on all fronts, in Gaza, in the north, and within Judea and Samaria. In Gaza, the IDF has been operating in the south and central areas. On the northern border, heavy cross-border exchanges with Hezbollah, and in Samaria, pursuing a terrorist gunman who wounded three Israelis. Day 284 of the war in Gaza. The forces of Division 162 continue fighting in the Rafah area. Over the past 24 hours, IDF ground forces eliminated a number of terrorists in coordination with the Air Force. They also located and destroyed a number of tunnel shafts in the area and destroyed additional terrorist infrastructure that posed a threat to IDF forces. The Alexandroni Brigade is operating in the center of the Gaza Strip. They carried out raids against 40 terrorist targets in the area using fighter jets and aircraft. Among the targets that were attacked were sniper and observation posts, military buildings, and terrorist infrastructure. Turning north, Hezbollah fired a barrage of rockets from Lebanon toward Kiryat Shmona and the surrounding area. Most of the rockets were intercepted and no injuries were reported. The barrage follows an attack by an Israeli aircraft on a car in Syrian territory near the Lebanese border. That attack eliminated a Hezbollah commander and also businessman Mohammed Bar al-Katarji close to the Assad regime. The businessman served as a money changer who helped finance Hezbollah and other organizations in the region. The cross-border attacks are ongoing. The Air Force struck a military storage facility in the Jabal region alongside a Hezbollah military structure in Kafar Kila in South Lebanon. And in Samaria, three Israelis were lightly wounded today when terrorists opened fire on a vehicle. The injured were an adult and two teens hurt by shattered glass. They were transferred to hospital for treatment. Over 50 bullets were reportedly fired. The gunman fled the scene after the shooting with the IDF in pursuit.
After the shooting, the head of the Samaria Council, Yossi Dagan, said there is a war in Judea and Samaria, just like there is a war in Gaza and on the northern border. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Elam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Only 24 hours following the October 7th attack, the terror group Hezbollah began targeting Israel's northern communities with rockets fired from Lebanon. As Chris Mitchell reports, nine months and thousands of rockets later, this undeclared war is having a deep impact on the region's economy, environment, and its people. Since the almost daily barrage began, life here is a dangerous and potentially deadly place. Noah and Nair Baranes died in a rocket attack July 9th, leaving behind three children. They're among dozens of civilians and soldiers killed by Hezbollah. Now, most communities along the Lebanese border stand nearly empty. Another casualty is the land itself, due to wildfires created by the combination of rocket fire and dry summer conditions throughout northern Israel, the Galilee, and the Golan Heights. The fires started by Hezbollah rockets have destroyed tens of thousands of acres and thousands of trees, some planted as far back as 60 years ago. These are the worst forest fires in the history of Israel. This intentional destruction, reaching nearly 40,000 acres thus far, is just another part of Hezbollah's goal to drain Israel's resources, wear down its people, and eventually eliminate the Jewish state. For us, it's huge. I mean, these fires here are equivalent to the fires in Northern California for us. That's how we experience it. Although it might be like a one or 2,000 hectare fire, which, I mean, it's big in any scale, but in Israel, it's huge. It's also destroying regional wildlife. When uh, fires starts in the spring, in the late spring, in the midst of the nesting season, then there's a real damage to birds. Um, uh, we're talking about chicks and nests that cannot fly. The parents are leaving, but the chicks are burning to their death and the birds are losing a whole generation. I feel like a refugee in my own country and it's not a good position to be at. Miriam Armon is among the tens of thousands of Israelis now living away from home. Before October 7th, her family had lived in the border community of Matula for five generations. The Hezbollah started the, the missiles, launching missiles toward Matula. Many, many houses got hit, mine included. But because of the Hezbollah, the terror organization, now attacking Israel, it's impossible to live it up north. The thing that is important that not many people knows about it not many people understand the situation that we just want to live in peace. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. A Yakima homeless shelter is taking action against the Washington Supreme Court, saying a recently changed law is preventing them from hiring new employees. Tonight we hear from the Yakima Union Gospel Mission and the response from the Washington State Attorney General. We just want to be able to keep doing what we've been doing for, for 86 years, almost 87 years. To, to do that, we need to be able to hire people that share our, our religious outlook. The that's, Yakima that's Union Gospel are. Mission so CEO sure Mike Johnson says do. they're struggling to fill crucial positions. They used to be able to exclusively hire people who align with their values, meaning Christian, and not a part of the LGBTQ community. The issue here is the fact that Washington Supreme Court recently 
uh, really gutted the state's religious employer exemption. Uh, that's the part of the law which allows them to hire like-minded individuals. Ryan so Tucker with the Alliance the Defending State Freedom State. says this has led to an influx of applicants threatening the mission. Now, they recently received an application for an open IT position, and the applicant said on the, the form itself that the Bible was false and that religion was indoctrination. And, you know, clearly a Christian mission, you know, shouldn't be forced to hire individuals who don't believe in the Bible. So, but under Washington's interpretation of its uh, non-discrimination law would have to. It's a similar situation that Seattle Pacific University faced last year when students organized a sit-in in response to a board of trustees banning employees from engaging in same-sex sexual activity. A federal judge dismissed the university's attempt to block a discrimination investigation. The attorney general's office says they're not currently investigating the Yakima Union Gospel Mission, adding, quote, I can only assume that this anti-LGBTQ plus law firm is desperate for any way to push its extreme theories in court, and they'll be seeking an early dismissal. Johnson says they just want to keep helping anyone who needs it. This is a really severe environment for organizations like ours, and, and we, need, we need some help. We're, we're, we're scared to death of, of what's coming down the pipe for us. By forcing the mission to, to hire people that don't share its beliefs, I mean, the state of Washington really undermines the, the great work that the mission is doing. Uh, it thre threatens its very existence and uh, certainly violates the Constitution of the United States. And the mission does help anyone regardless of their sexuality. We'll be keeping an eye on to see how their complaint plays out in court. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here at the Union Gospel Mission in Yakima, because we believe that God loves everybody and doesn't make disposable people, we offer shelter and food and recovery and counseling and case management. Our faith is what drives us into this space. It's also the essence of our community as co-workers. The government currently forces religious organizations to hire people who don't hold or adhere to the same beliefs on marriage and sexuality. The mission is a Christian ministry and should be free to hire people who share and live out these same Christian beliefs. And that's why we're fighting in court. Most of the folks that go to the street in addiction and mental health problems, they grew up in a lot of trauma and they need more than stuff. They need healing. And so it's really important that Jesus is alive at the center of everything we do because that's actually what makes what we do unique. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3, 1 Corinthians 12.26 And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. As you may know, Colorado is one of the worst states in the nation when it comes to the bird flu outbreak. The virus is infected an egg-laying chicken farm out in Weld, Weld County, where all the birds there, 1.8 million, will have to be killed. And in the last month, 26 herds of dairy cattle have been infected here, too, the most of any state. Colorado says three more people in the state may have the bird flu. The state is now still waiting for confirmation from the CDC. The state health department says all three are workers at a facility dealing with an outbreak of the virus. The state says they work in northeast Colorado, but did not specify exactly where. Investigators suspect the workers had direct contact with infected poultry. The workers have mild symptoms, including pink eye and some respiratory issues. The state reported its first case in humans last week. So if those cases are confirmed by the CDC, Colorado would have more cases in humans than any other state. Though with just four cases, that number would still be very low. Earlier this week, Democratic Governor Jared Polis declared a disaster emergency over the avian flu. A lot of people still have questions about what this means for them, so let's get some answers with Dr. Bob Belknap, the executive director of the Public Health Institute at Denver Health. Okay, bottom line, what do you want people to know about this in terms of how much this could possibly spread? Could it be the next pandemic? It could evolve. That's the reason that it's being tracked, and it's been, we've been tracking it now for a couple of years. Uh, the virus cha has changes and has changed, and if it continues, it could become more, more pathogenic to people, so make people sicker, and 
changed to where it can transmit from person to person. And then, yeah, that could cause a pandemic. Gain of function research, which is when you manipulate these viruses to make them highly transmissible right. to humans and then try and come up with a vaccine to stop it. And of course, it, it, the theory here and you, something you have always uh, believed is that there was a mistake, an accident at the lab, and somehow that virus leaked out. You, this raises real ethical questions about this gain of function research happening in labs, not just in Wuhan, but around the world. Um, you think they're, they should all be stopping this? Yeah, I wrote an op ed with Mark Siegel in the uh, Wall, uh, Wall Street Journal a, a little while back, really calling for a moratorium on gain of function research. I think it puts our world at great risk. Um, we have the risk of natural spillover, but there is a species barrier. I'm obviously most worried about bird flu. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it takes five amino acid change uh, for it to be effectively infecting humans. That's a pretty heavy species barrier. But th this virus is already now in 26 mammal species, as you saw most recently cattle. But in the laboratory, I could make it highly infectious for humans in months, because it's been wow. published the f uh, five amino acids that I need to change. And so I don't think that research should be done. That's the real threat. That's the real biosecurity threat, that these university labs are doing these bi uh, bio experiments that are intentionally modifying viruses. And bird flu, I think, is going to be the cause of the great pandemic, uh, where they are teaching these viruses how to be more infectious for humans. The World Health Organization has issued a stark new warning about global readiness for the so-called disease X, a term for the next hypothetical deadly pandemic that's going to hit us someday. The next pandemic is a matter of when, not if. And as things stand, the world remains unprepared for the next disease X and the next pandemic. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21, 11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. This health worker is one of many in Honduras going door to door spraying insecticide against mosquitoes. Cases of dengue fever, a mosquito-borne virus, are on the rise. We've had almost a 300% increase in the number of dengue cases registered compared to the same time last year, but we've been looking for ways to gradually reduce the increase. Honduras has confirmed more than 50,000 cases this year and dozens of deaths. Symptoms include headache, fever, and in severe cases, bleeding and organ damage. Elder Martinez is worried. She brought her grandson to a clinic after hearing children had been diagnosed with dengue fever. We brought him here to see if it is dengue fever, because if it is, he needs to be treated. This child of mine doesn't eat. He has a fever, but he doesn't have the flu or a cough, just a fever, and it does not go away. The World Health Organization says in the first four months of the year, more than seven million cases were reported in the Americas. That's three times higher than the same period last year. There's no cure for dengue fever. Currently, only one vaccine has been approved and licensed, and only in some countries. So for millions of people at risk, protecting themselves against the mosquitoes that carry the virus is the best option available. There are two key prophecies concerning Jesus' signs of his coming and the end of the age that are crucial to discerning that we are living in the last days. The first prophecy is found in Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. The second prophecy is in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Notice Jesus said when these things begin to happen. Jesus was saying that when you see a convergence of Bible prophecy, Look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. We are witnessing not only the convergence of Bible prophecy around the world, we are experiencing the frequency and intensity of these prophetic events as well. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, 
But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.